So tonight we talk about macro photography. What does it take to get really close to your subject? Does it take extension tubes? Do you have to buy an actual macro lens? What are you gonna need to make it happen? Hi, thanks for being with us. It's Eric and Michelle Fouché of Prime Photography. We wanted to come to you tonight and talk about a question that we've been seeing often recently, which is about macro photography and what kind of gear is needed for that. And the difference between using an actual macro lens and making that cost investment versus using extension tubes and whether or not extension tubes can be used as a viable alternative to the macro lens. So really, this is a, an extension tube. Um, in <laughs> it's your really place. hard to get. <laughs> Would you like it more in your grill? <laughs> So the answer to that question about whether or not extension tubes can be used to get the macro effect is really yes, they definitely can. There are just a few things that you need to be aware of before you choose to go that route because it does come with some drawbacks. Yes. Um, there are two main types of extension tubes that are currently available, um, those being manual extension tubes and those cost in the neighborhood of $20 typically. Yeah. And then there are automatic extension tubes, and those are more in the $80 range. So um, both still very low cost in comparison to making the investment of getting an actual macro lens. And we'll talk through some of the things to be aware of about choosing either of those styles of extension tubes and why, depending on the type of work that you do and your personal preferences, you might choose one versus the other or an actual macro lens. So yeah, uh, so these are extension tubes. We got the standard, like super cheap, $20 or $12. I don't remember exactly how much it was. There's no electronic at all. There's nothing, no contact, nothing at all. So this, everything, if you use this, you're gonna have to do everything in the lens. It's not gonna talk to the camera at all between the lens and the body. Uh, so that's gonna be a big problem. Right, I mean, so no autofocus no focus confirmation once you manually focus and no control over your aperture once uh -huh. you have this on your body. Yes, and by default, it's gonna use the widest aperture of your lens. So if you right. stick on there a 2.8, it's gonna be 2.8. And 2.8 is gonna be a little shallow for in macro work. So if you wanna F8, we're gonna show you in a few uh, minutes um, how to kind of trick the camera. Yeah, there's a uh, workaround for to, that. To, to, even though you use these, you can still set it in a way to f8, f11, or something like that. Yeah, and so then the other type of extension tube, as we mentioned, is the automatic kind, where it does, um, that's not it though, so <laughs> put, put that down, <laughs> where it does have the electronics uh, built in so that it stays in communication with your camera body, meaning you can keep your IS or your VC, um, you can have your autofocus, and you can control your aperture. Still some drawbacks there though, mm -hmm. um, just to be known about. Um, primarily those being, you know, if you purchase a macro lens and you have, like we have the 90 Tamron macro lens, um, which is that. Um, so one of the things about that is that, you know, you can use it for its macro functions, but then you can also use it as a non-macro as well. So it has that versatility there. Um, so I love the example you gave earlier where um, you know, if you're shooting a wedding and you're doing the macro shot of the rings and maybe you've placed them inside the bouquet, so you're getting the really tight close-in shot, but then you also want sort of a more environmental shot where you can see the entire bouquet with the rings placed inside. If you're using an actual macro lens, you can just get your macro shot and then back out to get the environmental establishing shot. But if you're going with extension tubes, either manual or automatic, you're not going to be able to do that. Um, so if you get your macro shot with these guys, then you're going to need to take those off and put your lens back on so you can scooch out and get what you wanted. So obviously if you are on a shoot that's a little bit time sensitive, you may not always have time to be making all of those manipulations. Um, so that's just one reason why a person might choose to go with the actual macro lens versus making these kinds of adjustments. And also obviously if you want to change your distance, um, you're gonna have to stop and take the lens off and take apart your tubes. Yes, which exposes the inside of the camera. If you have dust and wind, things like that, it's not very good to change lenses all the time. Um, so yeah, and really, if you use these extension tubes, uh, even with the electronic, 
um, uh, control with it, which is basically a pass through. All it does is it has a contact and it has wires basically, and then on the other side, it just report the same wires to the camera. I mean, there's nothing really complicated. And at no time, there's any optic also. It's not going to change the quality. It's not going to, you're not putting anything between the lens and the body. So that, that's, that's good. It's a pure nothing in there. Um, what was I going to say? Oh, even with these, whether it's the automatic or the, 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 the manual, the range, as soon as you put these on, the range of what you can work with is going to be almost nothing. Which goes back to what you were saying with, okay, you, you're trying to get the bouquet now. Yeah. It's not going to work. You're not going to see anything. Everything is going to be completely blurry. So you're going to have to take this off. And it's not very conducive for it to be creative or spur of the moment or somebody's walking by or whatever is happening. Right. So if you're in a studio and you can pre-plan yeah, everything absolutely. super cheap, it works. Optically, it works because it pushes the plane of the sensor to the back of the, the lens where it's supposed to be focusing. So this will work great with tripods and all that. But really, if you're handheld, you need the VC, you need all the, the flexibility. The macro lens, in my opinion, is the way to go. Yeah, no, I fully agree with that. So I think our answer to the question, can't you just use extension tubes instead of a macro lens is yeah, for sure. Yeah. Just make sure you know what some of the trade-offs are before you make that choice. Um, $20, $80, it's not that much, but still, I don't want to waste 20 bucks or 80 bucks um, only to find out that I'm not really happy with the capability it gives me. So it just depends, as almost everything does gear-wise, just depends on what kind of work you're doing and how often and in what circumstances you need to do that. Yes. And so, very like we're about to show some vi a video we just made showing um, basically what you can get with, without, compared to a macro. So you can see what, how close you can get an object to a subject and then you can see the magnification. Magnif magnification. We'll practice that later. <laughs> it's okay, it'll be edited. <laughs> okay, so to demonstrate, here I have the 50 millimeter. It can be the 50, 1, 4, 2, 8, doesn't matter. So this is a 50. And I'm gonna take a photo of this lovely ring. So here, I'm going to first make sure that the camera's on. So here th is the thing, is that I'm going to try... Oh, by the way, there's no extension tube, nothing. It's just directly the lens onto the camera. So here's... I'm going to try to focus, and of course it can't get focus. Oh, well, it missed. It got the reflection, but that's not right. So it can't get the focus, can't get it. Okay, so here I can get focused. This is my minimum working distance. Let me get a little closer. Nope, can't do. And then uh, there you go. So this uh, this distance is really the best I can do. The biggest version of the object in front here with a 50. Good, 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 good. And not good anymore. Okay, so here's a shot. So here... Okay, that's sharp enough. There's not a whole lot right now, a whole lot of light. Sure, uh, you we'll... want to add some light in? Oh, yeah. Yeah? Yeah. Okay. That'll help. I will use my iPhone as handy dandy makeshift flash. Yeah, very good. A little closer and higher. Yeah, thank you. Mm -hmm. So, nothing, 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 nothing. Oh, there you go. No. There you go. Got it? Yep. So, of course, the temperature changed a little bit. You'll see the, the picture. Okay? Okay. So, this is with the 50. This is the best we can do. Um, well, I'll show the camera later. Now, let on the 50, if you were to get the extension tubes. So, these are extension tubes. Now, they kind of stack. There you go. And this is the manual variety of extension yes. tubes. Yes. There's really no electronic. There's It's completely hollow. There's no electronic at all. And then you kind of stack for whatever how the distance mm -hmm. that you want to, to change. Now, for a 50, well, like for example, you could add onto right. actually this side and all that you kind of stuff. You can get up to that big. Yeah. But for a 50 or anything small like that, you can only go so much. Um, because otherwise, if, if I was to stack something like this big, 
it's not even going to focus at all like nothing either really close really far nothing is going to work so you kind of have to match so this 450 this distance is pretty good but if i was to use like 70 then you could probably use something like this distance right a 90 and a 100 or whatever then you can get you know longer tube to kind of match the focal length so 50 you really don't want to go anything bigger than this because otherwise it's not even going to work at all so let me show you how this is this little thing is can you hold it sure so you simply turn the camera off always and mount your lens doctor put this little thing there you go screw it in so now basically all i did it was to extend the little flange the little flange right here and then you mount the lens there you go so that's all it really did is to extend the distance between this and then the lens so now still at 50 i'm not going to change so as if it was a 50 so now we'll see what the minimum distance let me turn the camera back on i'm sure light back yeah might as well okay so the minimum distance before was about here right yeah roughly okay so one thing to mention is that there's no manual anymore there's no autofocus i didn't mean manual i meant um, any automatic things are just gone so if you have VC or IS or anything like that, it's not going to work. Right. Your lens is no longer talking to your camera body because mm -hmm. you have this uh, spacer. Right. And even shows here F0 because it doesn't it doesn't even know. But technically, it's, this is going to be at 2.8. Because that's where you had it when you... Uh, because this is the maximum aperture. This is a 2.8 lens. Okay. So if it was a 3.5, it'd be automatically set okay. to 3.5. And I'll show you a little trick on how to preset the aperture if you wanted nice. to have something a little deeper so anyway 50 with the extension tube so basically at this point i have to do everything manually so let me sit still at 50 something like this and now i can get yeah way closer let me take the lens mm -hmm. there you go That's one shot. Okay. It's a little overexposed. Okay. All right. So now we were able to get much closer, and you can see the difference. Still at 50. <clears throat> so we are able to fill the frame much more than this. Big difference. So this is it for the 50. Now, here's a little trick, actually. Um, 2 weight is definitely not going to be uh, conducive for macro. What would be good is to have like F8 or anything like that. But because you can't really change the aperture, nothing is, nothing is happening because it's not talking to the camera. There's no contact um, anymore. They, they're not talking anymore. So what you can do, it's a little trick, is you set your camera. You remove this. You put back your lens. There you go. Okay, so what you can do is to basically set it to, let's say, f8. Now, the app, the, the the whole the aperture is not changed. It will only change once you click and to take the picture once right. one, the whole mechanism starts so at f8 it will only start to close like do you see that bam like it closes like mm -hmm. this is wide open 2 8 and then bam uh, f8 so what you can do is you hold the the depth of field preview, preview button you hold it and as you hold it so it closed the lens if you unmount it it will stay closed at f8 so then yeah, can you hold this mm -hmm. so now the lens is stuck at f8 you can put back your and actually we'll take a, a shot that way and i'll show the uh, the problem with that okay so now the lens is disconnected there's no communication again because the extension tube 
but it is set at f8. So now if I was to take a shot, of course it's much darker in here. Oh, can you light me? Yeah. Okay, so now... Okay, that was really slow. Let me increase, because it's f8, obviously, yeah. so let me increase the ISO. There you go. So now this picture is technically, yeah, it's not super sharp. Let me. And this is the problem with manual everything is that you don't really. It's still overexposed. Let me. Okay, I guess that'll work. Fine enough for the example. Yeah, there you go. Yeah. So this one is technically at f8. Okay, so here we have the 90, there it is, the 90 macro from Tamron. This is a 2.8 with VC with no extension tubes. This is directly the camera with the lens. Now the big advantage is, of course, you can, you have all the functions back. That is, you can control the aperture, the, v, the uh, vibration control, um, the aperture, and the autofocus. Auto so that that's a big advantage so at the 90 compared to the 50 i'll show you what the minimum distance is compared to the 50 without the extension tubes and even compared to the 50 with extension tubes so here let me put it to my minimum focus and distance and it's about here so how far is this mm, that's yeah. five six inches okay so then let me take a shot now it, because the light is not super strong here there you go and see it confirmed the focus which is yeah. good now the exposure is not going to be super great i'm not worried about the light right now i'm only concerned about to explain and show the difference between um you know all the different mm -hmm. options so that was a 90 without let me see if it's actually in focus yes it is actually so I'm focusing on the tip. I don't uh -huh. know what this is called, but so this is the, really the minimum uh, focus. Now the great thing is that I can be shooting from here, and it would work fine also, or even shoot over there. The so, other ones you couldn't see anything. It was completely you were working in a, such a small range. Anything further, nothing. Completely worthless. This one works as a regular lens plus macro, and this is the minimum distance. Now if I wanted to take a bigger like to, to have a, a further magnification because right now this is one-to-one -one, um, result this is the last shot we just took if you just want to go further nothing stops you to actually add uh, further extension rings uh -huh. so let's just do this yeah this will indeed help increase the range but now I don't have communication anymore of course but we should be able to get even closer should be anyway well I there you go I have to do manual focus there you go now I can really focus on an individual part now without a the VC I'm shaking really badly. I should have a tripod. Wow, right. this is uh, not even close um, as far as... And that's a, that's a big problem. Uh, every time you use those extension tubes, you're going to have to really be super steady because you're, you're so close. that much and you yeah. lose your vibration control. It's you need a lot of light and you should have like, you know, 500th of a second and not 160 like right now. We don't have a whole lot of light, but... Okay, so hopefully at yeah, 250 it might be okay. I can feel, I can see that the image is like yeah. going left and right. So it doesn't matter. This is not the prob the, the, the question of um, exposure on this particular episode. It's just to show the magnification, what you can get and how much details you can. Now, because like I said earlier, this is a 90, you can technically then get one of these guys to get even closer to really... So, because this one allows that. Probably not all of them, but maybe one extra. Right, yeah. Um, 
I would say that maybe this one, an extra, and you should get even closer to have just one diamond out of it. Of course, at that level of magnification, probably going to shake a lot and there's no vibration control. So you're going to need a tripod, a very sturdy tripod. Okay. Thanks so much for being with us tonight, you guys. We really appreciate it. As always, feel free to leave your comments or questions below. And don't forget to subscribe to our channel if you want to be able to see more of our content. We always appreciate it. Thank you.